Hey, Vlad here, DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous video, we have implemented a pretty rudimentary version of Maps, and today we're going to add very well-known higher order functions to it. Let's get started. <music> As always, we're in the Ubuntu Virtual Machine and we have Sublime Text, which is the editor of my choosing, with a wonderful plugin called Terminus, which emulates a terminal for us, which runs SBT, which reruns the test every time we save the file. Now, when we implemented sets and we started implementing higher order functions, eventually we moved them out into a trait called Foldable Factory. Let me open Foldable Factory. This is how it looks like, and Foldable Factory itself also extends Foldable. Let me open that. Foldable has uh, one type parameter, it has one abstract method called fold, and all the others are implemented in terms of fold. There's size, there's contains, there's exists, and so on, and so on, and so on. Foldable factory uh, has also functions like map, right? Because map and flat map, among other things, they need to be able to create a, connect a, a collection, right? So foldable is sort of like a consumer and foldable factory is also uh, capable of producing things. So uh, map, it needs to call add, flat map needs to call add, uh, even filter needs to call add, right? And what we now would like to do is we would like to add our maps, you know, to, not, not to add our maps, we would like to take our maps and just let them extend the foldable factory. And there is a problem with that. So if you go to sats, go to sats, and then the way they extend the foldable factory is by saying, okay, so uh, it is a foldable factory for a set of elements. And as the second parameter here, it passes a type constructor with one hole, right? Uh, the arity is only one. Uh, so if we go to foldable factory, this is what it wants. It wants the element, the type of the element, and it, it wants a type constructor with only one hole. However, maps, they have two holes, right? They have the key, and the value. So uh, whereas we could uh, take the key and the value, put them together, and we would have a tuple, right? And uh, having that tuple, we could insert it over here, right? So, uh, I, so, so in theory, uh, we could say uh, it doesn't extend only function one. What it also does is it extends a foldable factory, right? And whereas this set said that the first thing is going to be an element, uh, we could just use a tuple, right? We could do key and the value. The problem starts over here because we can't use map here, right? Because what is expected is um, a, a type uh, constructor with only one parameter, uh, but we have a type constructor with two parameters. So there's nothing that we can do about this. And I remember a discussion about um, uh, a bottom-up design or, or, or top-down design uh, where, where I said, you know, uh, let's create this foldable factory and then, then let's see where we can reuse it. Well, it turns out that we can't reuse it. What we can do is we can create a foldable factory too. And it's a pretty common convention to say, okay, if the type constructor has uh, two type parameters, uh, then uh, we're just going to use the uh, number two in the name um, of that thing, that trait or whatever it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a foldable factory too, even though I'm pretty sure that we're never going to end up using it for, for anything else other than maps. So uh, what we end up, we'll end up having is, is something like this. Now, um, I'm just going to leave it like, like this. I'm not going to save the file, so I'm just going to uh, leave it like that. In fact, we're not going to leave it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to implement foldable because as I said, we can implement foldable because foldable doesn't want anything over here. So we can say that a map is a foldable of, of this tuple of, of, of key and value. Uh, let's see if that compiles. It shouldn't compile because we haven't implemented uh, fold, but let's uh, at least uh, refactor, uh, you know, let's let's clarify, you know, refactor this. So now it says, you know, um, uh, class map needs to be abstract since method fold and trait foldable of type blah, 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 uh, is not defined. So what we need to do is we need to define fold. So uh, we're going to define fold above the add function. So we're going to go and say final override the fold and it wants a result and uh, it wants a seed and it wants a function and another function uh let's actually go to uh to foldable um let's actually let's actually copy this entire thing let's actually copy this entire thing uh put it over here right the fold so now our element is a key value pair right so it's a key key value okay produce the result and the, the way we're going to implement it we're just going to say okay let's take the keys and call fold on the keys and we're going to say okay if it's empty then we're just going to return the seed Otherwise, we're going to create a function, um, same as always, ACC and current. In fact, current, let's call it current key. And what it will do is we'll just call this function, 
the one that we're passing over here uh, it will call it with the intermediate result which is ACC and uh, now it will take the current key and it will produce this tuple right with this current key and the unsafe value of current key and that's pretty much fold and because we have fold we have uh, everything that, that that foldable brings and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to the map suite map suite come on map where did I press map suite where's map suite hello where is it uh, project refresh folders there it is map suite okay uh, I don't know what's going on with my sublime recently it's so, somehow it loses indexes um, whatever uh, so we're, we're, we're over here at the, at the map suite and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy paste a bunch of tests for for all of these beautiful functions that we're getting for free uh, and this way we're gonna feel even more uh, warm and fuzzy oh wow that's actually uh, a really a lot of tests so uh, we're at line 229 and if I'm gonna insert that wow 387 so it's almost like double so let me just save that and see if everything is fine and dandy yes it is in fact there's no point in running all of the tests uh, let's go back to test only uh, user dot map suite all right so we have 36 tests now uh, let's go up and see actually what we added just real quick um, yeah this one is the first one so the size um, yeah there's one element so the size should be one there's two elements that should be two uh, if it's the same key then the size should be one because we don't have duplicates for each for each should be able to calculate the size I'm sure we have it somewhere here over here over here we're just testing it that that for an empty um, for an empty map um, the the lambda is not even being called like this exception is not even being thrown uh, no exception should be thrown by this this code um, yeah for each can be used to calculate the size um, what else exists same you know these are basically the same tests as we had in the sets I copied them over I adapted them to map and now I just copy copying them over uh, again from from the preparation from from a script so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go and implement equality because now that we have fold we can actually implement equality and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the sets and we're gonna see how equality is defined there so um, equals basically says that uh, this set is a subset of that set and the other way around as well so uh, if you wanted to implement equals the same way for the maps because it should be basically the same way then first we need to implement this subset off because maps are very set like so um, over here because sets are essentially functions from element to boolean uh, the definite the declaration actually looks like that but what we need is more like more like more like that the super set off um, because for, for the maps this this thing is not gonna work so um, let me let me go here and put the maps over here so we're gonna we have fold we have add we have remove we have um, a few of these in fact let's leave them at the bottom uh, let's go over here let's open the set again and let me type that out real quick so let's have the final def is subset off uh, but now I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use basically uh, this as a template for a uh, former thing instead of just super we're gonna have super value and uh, we're gonna have value instead of element and we're gonna have that and this used to be a set of super now it's gonna be a map of the same key as before but it's gonna have a super value and it's gonna return a boolean and that's pretty much it uh, it equals and now uh, what it was what it was doing it was just passing this predicate to for all because as I said sats were essentially uh, these functions it was the same thing so it just says does this is this function true for for all of the elements and now in this case it's very similar uh, but it's not exactly like that so uh, because if you call for all uh, remember we're implemented foldable with a tuple of key values so what we're traversing are those key value pairs so uh, let's use a partial function to uh, deconstruct those key value pairs and then we're gonna say okay so this is the current map and we're going through the through the domain of, of, of keys right so what we want to ask is if in that map if we ask that map to give us the value for that same key then it should be some some value right so it should be it should return the same value as this map would return it right so this is the entire implementation for for is subset off and if it wanted to implement is super set off in fact we can just duplicate this line and bring it down a little bit uh, let me actually do that so that you see the entire code uh, I'm gonna say is super set super set off we're not gonna use it actually uh, but still it's gonna it's gonna look pretty much pretty much the same as over here that is subset of this 
right? And now we can actually uh, implement equality, and then I will copy paste a bunch of a bunch of tests, and um, the the equality looks exactly the same as in sets. I'm gonna copy that, bring it down over here. It's not gonna be a set. It's gonna be a map of key value, and that's it. Now we have equality. That's that's yeah. That's 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 all there is. And uh, just for good measure, we're also gonna we're gonna copy paste hash code. So we're gonna use the hash code over here of the of the tuple, right? Or tuple. I still have no idea how to say them actually. Um, any case, this is um, just a fine thing. You know, if you're overwriting equals, we should also override hash code, even though hash code would have been fine on its own. Um, actually, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, copy paste a bunch of a bunch of tests. So the first test that we're gonna uh, we're gonna copy paste are gonna be the one for the var args, uh, because the way they they're written um, is. Um, they, they use equality, right? So um, this one should not compile. Uh, that's fine. We could have, we could have done this uh, already before, but this one, the one was the var args. Uh, it, it uses equality, right? So it says should be some other map, right? So it compares this map with this other map, which is why I waited uh, until we have equality so that I can implement this test. But um, essentially, we were actually supposed to add it, uh, you know, even in the previous video. But we had the test for add, and you know, it's all good. Um, all right. So let me just copy paste all the others. Um, it's actually kind of kind of a lot. Um, especially for equals, um, equals and hash code, uh, all of them. There we go. All right, gonna paste that. We're at line 405. So let's go to 405. Uh, I saved the file, so let's see if it uh, if it compiles and if it's work it's working. Um, it should be. All right, it's working. So a subset of uh, same thing. So the empties they should be true. Uh, the uh, the empty map is a subset of, of, of everything, basically. Um, what is that? Uh, it's a subset of itself, yes. Um, a subset of on a non-empty map should yield false, obviously. Uh, left a subset of right because the right has one element more, yes. Um, super sad, it's basically the opposite. Uh, it's kind of boring. Uh, equals, okay, so we have this reflexive thing and we have the symmetric thing and we have the transitive thing. You know, we did it very, you know, in a, in a very excruciating way um, for, for these sets. So, um, so it's all good. Um, yeah, and these also should not be equal. And we have the same warning as we had with the sets. So we have this and we get a warning, but I don't want to see the warning. So I commented this line out. Uh, what else? Um, also a few tests for the for the hash code. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to implement two string, and um, we're going to implement it first, and only then we're going to write the tests. So uh, we're going to implement two string, and it's going to be very similar like in the sets. So let's go to sets actually, and let's see what it's doing for two string. So um, yeah, let me take that. Let me just let me just copy all of that, and paste it over here. Okay, and let's just adapt it. So uh, a sat is backed by a tree, and the map is backed by a sat, which is backed by a tree. So uh, which is kind of funny. So we can we can actually go to the sat and um, pattern match on the tree, and we can say, okay, if the tree is empty, uh, then uh, show it to me like this, and otherwise, if it's not empty, then show it to me like that, over here, and. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, uh, so we don't have an element. I mean, we're, we sort of do, but it, but it's actually the key. So uh, what we're going to say is we're going to say unsafe rendered, unsafe rendered key. And we're going to have unsafe rendered, which is going to be a tiny private def over here. Uh, private this, private this def uh, ur unsafe rendered. Uh, it's going to take the key and produce a string. And what it will do is it's going to have string interpolation with the key and the arrow to the right. And uh, it will just call the unsafe value, uh, no, not render, unsafe value of, of key. And that's pretty much it. Uh, split by comma space is going to stay exactly the same. Oh, except except for the current, because current is basically the current key. So this one is the current key, and we also want to render it. So uh, this is also going to uh, call unsafe rendered. This is why, why we have it, uh, current key. Okay, so if everything compiles and it does not compile, uh, input is a tree of element. No, it's not a tree of elements, it's a tree of key. There we go. Okay, so now everything should be fine. So I can just go back and copy paste the tests for uh, for to string. So um, I'm copy pasting them uh, because we, we, we have added them in the sets. So I'm just going to take that 
and I'm gonna paste them over here 559 save that go to 559 and let's see this okay so we have to string on, a, on an empty map should yield an empty map like this fine uh, to string on the map was one element should yield map key value that's what we have map key value generating key generating value calling to string um, to string on the map was two elements should contain two parents both elements uh, two arrows and one comma so uh, we have this we have that uh, we have those arrows, right? So this is how this is how I check for errors. We just count the the minuses and the greater than um, symbols. Same thing for the three elements. So uh, we just want to have more of these now. Um, three. Um, what else? Uh, the string should not produce any commas with leading leading spaces. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to um, start working on, on the foldable factory, uh, the one that that um, that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. So if I go up over here, so right now we extend foldable, uh, but we actually want to extend uh, foldable factory, foldable um, factory 2, the one that we don't have yet. So I'm not going to save this file. Uh, I'm actually going to, um, let's actually destroy the pane on the left and um, have a map over here foldable factory close steps to the right yes so uh what we're going to do is i'm going to take all of this right i'm going to copy that i'm going to create a new file uh, i'm going to save that as foldable factory 2 dot scala right it's going to paste that in and uh, i'm going to go and i'm going to mark everything that says foldable factory i'm going to call it foldable factory 2 and I hope I did it in a case sensitive way. Yes, I did it. Uh, all right. So if I save that now, it shouldn't compile uh, because um, we're, because the foldable factory actually uses the factory as well. So what we need is we also need a factory too. So let's see where we use factory. Actually, this is a factory, factory two. Where do we use it? Factory here, factory, factory uh, here. Okay, so this is the only declaration. So uh, before I save that, let's open the factory, factory. Right, it has the same problem, right? It's only one parameter instead of, instead of two. So uh, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to create a new file called factory2.scala. I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to call it factory2 um, just for now. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fix the, the type of parameters yet, right? So we're going to have factory2. Um, what does it say? Uh, foldable factory2 line 5. I didn't save that. There we go. Save it now. Okay, it says let's go for the type parameter bounds. It doesn't factory two. Oh yeah, the same thing over here. So these subtype of foldable factory. Should I rename this one? I don't want to rename this one. Uh, I'm gonna keep it like that. But I'm just gonna go here and say I have a two over here. That should be fine. Okay, so not compiles, but still, but but it's basically uh, all, all wrong, right? Because the whole purpose uh, of the of the two here is is to have um, two parameters over here. So technically, it's it's actually a three, uh, but we want to have a key here, and we have want to have the value, and we want to have the subtype of uh, foldable factory. So we want to have we, we want to have all of it. Now, uh, this is pretty much a, a very tedious rewrite. So uh, what I thought that would be a good idea is I'm going to turn the camera off and then I'm just going to uh, start rewriting it. And then in the edit, I'm just going to speed it up. And uh, this way, we're not going to waste uh, too much time. So let's go.
Alrighty then. So uh, I did the whole refactoring, and um, the big differences are that the Factory 2 does not have nothing because the map or you know the subtype of foldable factory is only covariant in one of the positions and therefore we can use nothing in the second position where we can't use nothing in the first position and therefore we don't have nothing um, at all so uh, instead we have the death empty uh, which will be implemented um, in the in the map factory uh, the other thing is that if we go to foldable factory 2 uh, I have been using tuple 2 key value uh, because uh, there's, a, there's a difference between um, between this and between that. So this is a function that takes two parameters and uh, this is a function that takes a tuple two. And therefore, as you all know by now, I don't like these uh, double parentheses, so I kept using tuple two instead. So let me remove that. Now that we have uh, both of them, uh, let me actually save this again. Uh, we can go to map and we can actually uh, implement this. So in order to implement this, we, we're gonna save the file with foldable factory two of key value and uh, like that and like that and map because now what it wants foldable factory 2 what it wants is two type holes right it, it wants it wants um it wants a type constructor with two type holes and map is a type constructor with two type holes so there, therefore it's going to work and the only thing we need to add is we need to override the empty uh, empty function right so we need to do a final override uh def empty the same as we did in the set uh let me actually um, sorry, let me actually open the set. This is the same thing as we're doing in the set. Final override predicted death factory is a factory of set, and we have set. So um, final override uh, predicted death empty key value uh, equals. Why did I set actually? Why did I set empty? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, factory. Why did I call it uh, empty? Um, it's a factory, and it is a it is a factory of. Hold up, it's a factory. Factory two factory two of map, right? And what it is, is it is the companion object. So if we go down to the companion object, we, uh, the same as with the sets, uh, in fact, let me do this. So I have map on the right, I have set over here. So if I collapse this thing, so the same as with the set, the map is going to be a factory, factory two of set, but whereas set overrides nothing, uh, we're going to override empty, which we already have. So we can have uh, final override def empty, and that apply thing is being brought by the factory, so we can just remove it like this. And I believe if I haven't forgotten anything, then um, it should already be fine. Uh, obviously, it's not of a set, it's of a map. And there we go. And uh, yeah, if that compiles, that basically means that, that we have fu functions like map and flat map. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to copy paste the test for them. So uh, this is the test. Da -da 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 -da. Um, let's go into map suite, go down. So we're line 631. Let's have a bit more space over here. And we're going to insert these tests. And we're gonna run them, and it should be fine. All right, so um, six three one over, over here. So this is where we were. So uh, yes, map the same as for each. If it doesn't contain any elements, then the function is not gonna be called. And uh, map should produce a map, basically, right? So before the the um, well, technically map map should yeah well. Well, yeah, map produces a map. So uh, before we have, uh, remember, because we're using those foldable factories, right? So in the foldable factory, as what we're saying is that uh, whatever we're calling this thing on, uh, this is the same thing should be produced. So if we call a map on a set, the set should be produced. And if we call a map on a map, a map should be produced. Uh, this is basically, this, this is actually a little bit different in the, in the Scala um, standard library. Uh, what's happening in the standard library is a bit more fancy. Uh, so Scala tries to figure out the, the best collection uh, for you to produce and it produces that. So for example, you can have a, let's actually do that. Um, so if you have um, the regular terminal and if you have a map with one uh, is a one and the two is a two uh, so we can map that and uh, we can map that for example to um, so this is a tuple right so um, let's do a case uh, key value right uh, let's let, let's just let's just get the keys basically or, or let's let's produce a string with uh, key arrow to the right and, and value and let's use not forget the dollar signs dollar 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 
All right, like this. So we're, we're calling map on the map, but what is produced is not a map. What's being produced is a list, right? Well, technically iterable, but it's now it's a list of pairs, a uh, list, list of strings in this case, right? So um, if you have zero dot had, uh, it is actually you know this this string. Uh, where, whereas in our maps, um, what we're producing is always maps, and we're probably gonna keep it like this because uh, this way is just like way more uh, way more simple. Um, yeah, but essentially, so we have an input like this. We have a hello and world and world and hello. And what we expect is that every string is going to be reversed. So we're calling map, we're pattern matching, you know, key value. And we reverse the key, we reverse the value. And it should be what we expected. And uh, this one, map should be able to produce a map or something else other than than, um, than a uh, string. I said or something else, uh, a map of something else other than a string. Uh, this was from the time where we uh, discovered uh, generics for the very first time. So if we have a map of hello world, we map it to, uh, the, to the size of the key and the size of the value. So we get a different map with five, six. So this is the size of hello and this is the uh, um, size of planet. Uh, we could also do length here instead of size. And um, this is a very important note over here that uh, because maps are being backed by, by sets and sets are being backed by trees and so on and so on and so on, uh, the sets don't have duplicates. So um, if you have a map which had two elements in the beginning, it had hello planet and it had world whatever. In fact, uh, as I already mentioned, I actually want to do it like want to have it like that, right? So it had two elements, and now we're mapping, and all of a sudden it's going to have only one element. Why? Because both of those keys they have to have the same length, right? So the key dot size is going to return five in both of those cases. So when it's when it's rebuilding the map, it's going to say, okay, so let's put in a five and a six in there, and then the second element is going to be a five and uh, how many characters do we have here? Eight, right? The second element is going to be five and eight. So what we'll, it will see is, oh, five is already there, so it's going to put a five eight in there instead. So it's going to override that other key. So now we have a map with only one key. So effectively, it's it's kind of a filter. So this is one of those things that you need to be careful with with the sets. Well, in fact, in in the sets, if you map them, uh, pr pretty much nothing's going to well. Well, technically, if you take a set with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, actually, let's do that. Why not? Um, so we're going to go to the Scala compiler, and we're just going to take a set of one, two, three, four, right? So if you call map, and you say, I don't care about the element that is going to come in, I'm just going to map it to a two, then all of a sudden, the set that is going to be produced is going to have only one element. And this is exactly the same thing that is happening with the maps, right? So uh, always be, be careful. Um, about that. We're going to talk about this uh, once we're going to start t talking about more functional concepts like uh, functors and stuff and we're going to see uh, you know if sets or maps are actually functors or not uh, because uh, only having the map does not make you a functor. Um, anyway, um, flat map, I was actually struggling to come up with with, um, with a sense, with, with a test that, that, that makes sense for, for flat map. I don't think I've ever called uh, flat map on a map in, in production code. I'm not sure. Yeah, but in any case, it, it is possible, and and therefore I wrote a test that that um, has um, alphabet. Uh, so so a uh, has a hash code of whatever the hash code of a is. It should be ninety seven, I think, and uh, b um, should be ninety eight, I believe. And uh, then we have another map which says, okay, so if it's a ninety seven, then it should be false, and if it's uh, a ninety eight, then it should be true. Right, because it's you know it only returns true for the one that is even, and we take the alphabet we call flat map, deconstruct the tuple, uh, we take we take the even call map deconstruct the tuple, and then we're producing another tuple with uh, with the original key and then with the original value, and now we see okay the A has the even hash code and the B also has the even hash code. Why did that happen? So that that happened because um, what is being produced again? I, I said like it doesn't doesn't really uh, make sense. So so what what it, what it produces is a cross product, right? So it produces an um, uh, a false, a true, uh, b false, b true, right? And then uh, because it's a map, it filters out the duplicates, right? So the first a false it, it filtered out because it added the a true, and then uh, this is just the last ones that 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 were added because because the true one was the last one. So so um, these ones have have one. Okay, and uh, this is pretty much uh, all that, that that I have for today. Uh, we're not we're not done with maps. We're still gonna have um, some uh, very map specific functions uh, in the next video, and uh, we're actually getting pretty close to the topic of implicits. So um, let me commit that. So let me go and add everything, and uh, commit hyphen am. It's gonna be video twenty one. And we're just gonna, I'm just going to call it folder maps. I really have no idea how to call it. Um, so I'm going to push all of it and let's check. Let's go to commits, refresh the page. 21, folder maps. 
yeah, so we added the factory two, uh, foldable factory two. Um, now our maps uh, don't only extend function one, they also uh, extend foldable factory two. Um, we also added the two string and equals. Um, the companion object also extends in factory two, added a bunch of tests. All right, and uh, as I said, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, in the next video, we're going to see the interplay between sets and maps, and we're going to implement a few interesting functions on maps. Uh, the ones we didn't have, the, the ones that we didn't have before, and a few of them are actually going to be a bit of advanced, and they're going to touch uh, on the topic of databases, actually. And um, yeah, that's all. It's been Vlad, devinsideu.com. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and most importantly, take care.